Welcome to another edition of Expert Talks here on Kalkine TV. I'm Sage. Today's guest is Mr. Paul Redhead, the technical lead at Robotics Cats. And if you haven't noticed, wildfires have been burning hectares of bushland across several continents over the last five years or more. And could the early detection of fires and other catastrophes aid in reducing the damage caused? Well, Robotics Cats Limited provides early wildfire detection and environmental monitoring pro products. Headquartered in Hong Kong, the diverse team draws on its wide range of talent to focus on computer vision, AI and robotics technologies. And I'm keen to find out more. So bringing you live today, we have Mr. Paul Redhead, technical lead at Robotics Cats. Welcome to the show, Paul. Oh, thank you for having me. Uh, very new to be live. <laughs> <laughs> it's exciting, isn't it? <laughs> uh, very much so. <laughs> well, we are so happy to have you with us with your experience on countless projects worldwide with a large number of stakeholders from governments to the commercial sector. So could you help us understand what you do a little bit by talking through how artificial intelligence can protect forests from wildfires and other dangerous activities? Sure. Um, I'll give you a, a little bit of a generalization before I just focus on our own company. So uh, AI in itself uh, recently has been a huge advancement in offering uh, one of the wing ones would be predicting where fires are likely to occur. Uh, another one I've seen is analyzing resilience. That's been very interesting. They've taken data from fires uh, and they take all the data after an event, uh, what buildings have burned, what, ha what hasn't burned, they put it into a model and they try and simulate to get an understanding of, of, of why something's happened. So why have some, some areas burned, why others haven't, and they can model that using AI, uh, which hasn't been available in the past. Uh, and then another one is spread analysis. So when you have a fire event, um, like where is it going to go? If we look at it 24 hours, 48 hours, uh, who would be affected and how, how can we evacuate communities and notify people? Uh, so then with Robotics Cats, uh, and, and, and in fact, with my entire working career, it's been on how do we find fires. So um, the quicker you can detect it, the quicker you can put it out. And with the advent of AI within the last sort of two years, we've been able to make really good progress in enabling cameras and, and not just uh, specific cameras, but general security cameras uh, to detect fires. Wow, that's amazing, because I know here in Australia, some of the actual natural bushland requires fires for germinating and, you know, creating their existence. So h how does your AI um, manage that? Is there anything to incorporate that part of the natural ecosystem? No, so specifically with our camera technology, we're only focused on finding the fires. So. Um, how, like if we if we relate that into into what you're talking about, mm -hmm. um, it, it can come up with if you once you start a fire event, it needs to be managed. Right. So if you don't manage that event, it's very quickly gonna gonna go out of control. And once it's out of control, you're not gonna be able to stop it. And and that's what you're, you've seen in Australia in 2019. Mm -hmm. You've had events start and they've not been able to be brought under control very quickly. So the way to do that is to rapidly find where those fires are. Uh, within Australia, you have an enormous country and it's very sparsely populated. So when you get an event, there's not always going to be someone around to be able to detect it quickly and notify the authorities or people. Um, with natural land that needs to be burnt, that's very true. Uh, I grew up in South Africa. I was always taught that the bushland needs to burn uh, for germination, pest control and, and all those sorts of things. But that still needs to be managed if you don't want catastrophic events. Absolutely. Thank you so much for sharing that. Sounds very, very interesting. So please share your insights on the essential features of a successful wildlife detection system, especially in the remote areas that you mentioned. Sure. The, um, the key things for a fire detection system would be your time, accuracy and location. So what was, uh, as I mentioned, I've, I've done this for my whole working career, so I can only draw on bits of knowledge I've picked up from, frankly, experts uh, in, in fire suppression over the years. And it was told to me that if you have a really, really bad day, 
you have about 15 minutes to put a fire out before it's out of control. So that means you need to find the fire and get something there putting water on it within 15 minutes. So your time's critical. You need to find it really quick. And, and with that, you need it to be accurate for the location. So once you know where a fire is, uh, you, you can see there's a fire, we know where it is. So we can send off, uh, the teams there very quickly to put it out. Uh, those to me would be the two key factors uh, in a good detection system. Okay, thank you so much. I've even heard recently of some flood detection systems occurring as well. So this is fantastic because at the moment our already sodden flood ravaged areas are preparing for another flood. So um, it's great to hear that companies are working to try and beat these natural disasters. Have you partnered with Precise Operation to provide lookout fire, uh, wildfire detection services in Mozambique? And this sounds great. Would you please share more details on this venture? Yeah, sure. Um, I, I like how you mentioned Mozambique. It's, it's, it's not a country that's going to come up in anyone's sort of mind. And, and being from South Africa, uh, I know the neighboring countries, and of course, it's quite an important one. Um, Precise Operation, they're, they're an agri-tech startup. They, they searched around the world for um, fire detection systems and found our company. And they were looking, they, they found that there were not many startups that had actual deployments. And, and we've got years and years of experience within our company. Um, so they contacted us because they're trying to help uh, local eucalyptus, which rings a bell from Australia, uh, as well as leachy farms. And what they find, which I've seen throughout my career, is in, in many, I don't want to say third world countries, that, that, that's rude. In a lot of rural areas, um, people will burn, will burn agricultural land for farming. What will happen is those fires can get out of control unless the people that are doing it are well educated. And it's been affecting customers of precise operation, and so they wanted a way to detect those fires. Uh, and they looked for something for five to 10 kilometers, found our product, uh, we did a proof of concept in February with them, which was quite successful. Uh, and now they're looking to market it within the country. Uh, specifically, compared to everyone else in the market, our, our product's very inexpensive. So that means it's available in, in countries that are, that are not as affluent. That's great to hear that you're able to keep the cost of this fantastic technology um, quite minimal so people can access it easily. So which are the wildfire hotspots worldwide that are increasingly coming to your attention and falling into danger? It's, it's a, that's actually a really good question. I was pondering it. Um, I've, been, I've been thinking about it for a long time now. Uh, we, we always hear about Brazil. We always hear about California. And, and of course, Australia had I mean, one, of the, one of the worst events in recent, in recent history. Um, but that's not everyone that we're hearing from. We're hearing from, uh, I mean, Scotland contacted us looking for support for the Moor fires. Uh, we've got systems deployed in Madeira. Uh, and, and then we get back to Australia. So uh, we partnered with Optus uh, last year to run a pilot in ACT, which was funded by the Mindaroo Foundation. Uh, we learned a lot from that and are, are, have then been able to train our systems more effectively to work within the Australian environment. But Rather than focusing on, on continents and countries, uh, we actually need to look within our cities. So that was your comment about the bushfires. There's been a huge trend for um, uh, people moving to cities as well as the spread of those cities and people moving into um, the wilderness areas. So even my house here in Brisbane that my wife and I uh, moved into recently, it, it borders bushland. Uh, my house is, a, is, is sitting on a fire risk. So it's not up to just governments and agencies to do this. We can, we can move this technology into homes, into commerce, businesses, so that everyone shares the responsibility in, in, in taking care of the wildfire risk. That's fantastic to hear. It's about raising the awareness and closing that gap between the business world and, and the consumers. Uh, thank you so much for sharing your insights today. It's, it's been very insightful. And would you please share to finish off your opinion on the developments made in forest tech in 2021, please? Sure. Um, it, it's such a big category. Uh, the best I can tell, offer you is the you have a superset of this where you've got forest tech, clean tech, green tech, climate tech. 
uh, and, and then as a subset, you have Firetech, which is where we're operating. Um, there was a very, very good publication released called The State of Firetech, and it was published by a company called Wonder Lab in California. Uh, they have a very, very good assessment of this, and they highlighted four areas of priority. The one is risk assessment, uh, mitigation and risk reduction. So how can we reduce our uh, vulnerability to wildfires? Uh, early detection, uh, as mentioned, where we're focusing. And the fourth area was recovery and adaption. So once you've had an event, how do you recover from it and how do you adapt uh, for future events? So uh, with the many new tech advancements and the startups trying to build prototypes, uh, we pride ourselves on the fact that we have a technology that's already deployed in 13 countries. And we're trying hard to, frankly, tackle the wildfire risk globally. Sounds great. The work that you're doing is invaluable. Thank you so much for your dedication to yeah, such a great you. cause. Oh, well, thank you very much. And, and thank you for offering for us to come and chat today. It's, it was great. We appreciate your insights. Enjoy the rest of your day. Thanks. You too. And if you've just joined us, we had a very interesting discussion with Mr. Paul Redhead, the technical lead at Robotics Cats. And please watch the full interview at Calcai Media's YouTube channel and keep watching for more of these live expert talks and market insights. Until the next episode, stay apprised and invest wise with Calcai Media.